Amen. Good morning, everybody. We'd like to welcome you to sing and praise and worship with the praise team on today. You can get up on your feet. You can lift your voices. You can clap your hands. Just help us worship the Lord on today. Everybody say bless, 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 oh, say bless, 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 oh, we're blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go.
everything we've done to deserve the love and mercy you've shown but your grace was strong enough to pick us up and you you made a way when our backs were love God forever. How many of y'all really know love God on, on today? In spite of you made it to church on this morning, he woke you up this morning clothed in your right mind. How many of you really love God on today? Yeah. 
your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness towards me. Your love is so amazing, it brings me to my
starting you on your way. I know sometimes we don't feel like we want to feel. We complain about everything, but we got a reason to praise God today. Hallelujah. And if you don't know what the reason is, I'll tell you. He woke you up this morning. Tell somebody, he woke you up this morning. You having a good day. Hallelujah. In spite of what you're going through, we still serve a good God. It could be a lot worse. How many of y'all watching the TV and hearing all the stuff going on on TV? Everybody going through something. Shootings everywhere. Family killing family. The Bible talked about that in the last days. How many of y'all know we're in the last days right now? Hallelujah. And if you ain't getting your life right, I think today is a good day to start. Tomorrow is not promised to any one of us. So every day I try to make my day a little bit better than yesterday. I try to take some things out that I know is not pleasing to God. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, but we're trying to get there. Amen. I want to see Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank God for this day. God has been good to me. I thank God for each and every one of you that's out today. We ought to give God some praise. We ought to lift up the name of Jesus. The name above all names. He's a healer. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming out. We thank everyone for joining in with us on Facebook, YouTube, all of our partners, all of our members that's out of state. We appreciate you. We thank you for coming in with Second Sweet Home. We in for a good time today. I don't know about you, but I need a little more Jesus. How many of y'all need a little more Jesus? Every time I go through something, I say, Lord, I need a little bit more of you. That's the only way we're going to make it. Hallelujah. We Watching the TV, most of you, if you're not watching the news, Pastor and I was watching last night. There's another variant out now. Hallelujah. And they say it started in Africa. I'm not saying it didn't, but why we always got to put it on us? My God. But I'm just letting everybody know, it's no time to put your guards down. We got to start washing our hands, watch what we touch. And I'm going to the market, I'm going to the stores. I was at Macy's for a little while yesterday, and all the people walking around with no masks on. Hallelujah. I put my trust in God. I'm not trusting what they say you can come out without a mask on. I'm putting my mask on. I feel safer with my mask on. I've had my shots. I still have to go get my booster shot, but I'm still doing what the doctor says. I'm wearing my mask. Because there's a lot of people out there with no masks on their head, not one shot. Amen. Y'all know that. Y'all know some people that walk around like they had a shot and know they didn't. Amen. You got to protect yourself. So I'm asking all of you, let's protect one another. Wash your hands. Keep your mask on. Social distance. I don't want to lose any of my loved ones. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose any of my friends. We got to protect one another. And we got to continue to keep our guards up and continue to pray for one another. Amen? We didn't have prayer this past Saturday. I know all of you wanted to go out and shop and do all that. But on this Saturday at 1 o'clock, we will be here at the church. Anybody that want to come out and pray, the church will be open from 1 to 2. 
you're welcome to come out. You can stay the whole hour or you can pray if you got something else to do. You can do that. But I think this is a season we all need to be praying. Amen. It's time out for us asking everybody else to pray for us. It's time for us to pray for ourselves. God answer prayers. And I'm seeing some things starting to manifest already. Prayer changes things. I thank God for each and every one of you, and we're going to continue to pray for our pastor. Give him a hand. He's doing a marvelous job. In spite of how he's feeling, he's coming out and he's giving God his all. And we need to hold him up in prayer. Amen. We're going to get ready to have our scripture by Minister Armbrister. And after that, we're going to have our prayer by Minister Mays. And we got a mighty word coming forth by our own Pastor Joseph Long. Amen. How many of y'all ready for the word? How many of you need the word? I need the word in my life. Hallelujah. We thank God for our praise team. Singing glory to God. Amen. Minister May. Minister Armbrister, I'm saying Minister Mays. Minister Armbrister, come. Hey, Amen. We glad to have him back off his vacation. God is so good. Amen, church. How is everyone on this Lord's Day? Amen. Our scripture on today is from 1 Peter. Amen. Chapter 4. And we'll start at verse 1 and go our way down to verse 6. And I'll be sharing with you the New King James Version. Amen. And I ask that those that are capable and willing to stand as we read the Word of God on today. Amen. So 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, on to verse 6. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness and lust and drunkenness and revelries and drinking parties and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Verse 6, for this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his holy writ. Minister Mays, amen, is going to come and pray. Amen. And I ask that you all continue to be standing as he does so. Amen. This Wednesday coming up is Bible study. For those that is going to come on Bible study with us, you can get the link off the church Facebook page. Uh, it starts at 6 o'clock. Most gracious and eternal Father, we come to you right now, Lord, saying thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Lord, you have bought us from a mighty long ways. Lord, you have kept us when we couldn't keep ourselves. And for that, we say thank you. Lord, we ask that you will continue to bless our pastor and co-pastor, Lord. Continue to strengthen them right now. Continue to put a hedge of protection around our children right now, Lord. We ask that you will look down on Sister Cooper this morning, Lord. Touch her body right now. Touch her kids right now, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will touch Sister King on this morning, Lord. We ask that you will strengthen her. We ask that you will touch Sister Zeta this morning, Lord, that you will give her the strength that she needs right now, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would touch Sister Ella's son right now, Lord, that you will touch his body from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet right now, Lord. We ask that you will bless us right now, Lord, that you will 
touch our minds and hearts right now, that you will give us the ability to come together in unity in your house right now, Father God. Father God, we ask that you would touch every minister right now, Lord. Look down and bless Minister Sarah right now, Lord. We ask that you will look down on Minister Harris right now, touch her right now. Lord, we ask that you would touch our brothers right now, that you would continue to heal their bodies, Lord. Look down on Minister Corey and his family right now, Lord. We ask that you will bless him right now, Lord. We ask that you would touch all our deacons right now, Lord. We ask that you would touch those that may be in route here, that you will cover them right now, Lord. Touch the homeless man standing on the street corner. Touch the mother that's laying in the hospital bed that can't wave no more. Lord, we thank you for this ministry right now. Continue to allow us to grow and be the beacon of this neighborhood right now, Lord. To where when we walk out and talk to people, they say, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we thank you for allowing us to make it into your house one more time, Lord. We can't take it for granted, so we say thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will continue to look down on our front line workers right now as they have to go to work, Lord, that you will continue to protect them, Lord. We thank you for allowing Minister Arpis and his family to make it back home safely, Lord. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. you to give you our tithe and offering information so if you would like to give by way of text you can take out your phone at this time you will be texting to the number 313-855-5014 again the phone number is 313-855-5014 in the comment area, you will put in your dollar amount. After that, you will hit send. If this is your first time doing so, it will prompt you to put in your banking information. But if you have done it before, you are simply done and the money is put into the bank. If you would like to give by way of mail or either bring it in on Sunday mornings, we are here from 10.30 until 12.30 on Sunday mornings. Our address for mail or bring in is 19130 Beaconsfield, Detroit, Michigan, 48224. I am Monique Fomby, and you can text me if you need to allocate funds anywhere other than your tithes and offering. Um, if you would like to give by way of your assessments, you can put it all into one text. Just text me at 313-629-3841 and let me know the dollar amount that you want allocated and where you want it allocated to. So for instance, if you wanted to give $50 tied and $50 towards your assessment, you would text in $100. You would text me then and say 50 of $50 go to the assessment and your name. Amen? Amen. Thank you for listening.
thankful to God for just another day that the Lord has blessed us and we just excited to be back in the house of God one more time how many are excited about what God is doing in your life we welcome you in this morning second sweet home missionary Baptist Church we are excited about the things that God is doing in our life, we thank God for those of you that thought it'd be fitting and enough to come out to worship service this morning. To our Facebook family, we thank God for you this morning. We invite you in. Get on the internet right now, share this service with somebody else. For we're living in the last days and there is nothing, somebody say nothing that we can do without the Lord. And I'm just so grateful to be in your presence one more time, thanking God for all that he has given us and for all that he is doing. Hallelujah. How many of you had a beautiful Thanksgiving? Come on, let's give God some praise. Praise God. I'm still eating leftovers. Anybody else like me? I kind of told my wife when she was preparing food, I said, would you please not cook too much? Because I don't want to be eating this for the next five days. I had greens for breakfast, dressing for lunch, Macaroni for dinner. Anybody else like me? Greens and turkey for breakfast. Ham for lunch. Oxtails for dinner. I might go home and eat a bologna sandwich today. But we're just thanking God, we're just thanking God for all that he is doing, for all that he is in our life. And I don't know about you, I'm just grateful to God to be alive. For we realize in this day and age that we live in now, if God is not working for us in our lives, 
then we in a bad way. And we're praying for the sick, bereaved, and less fortunate everywhere. So many folk are going through, and we want the saints of God to continue to pray for the bereaved, the less fortunate everywhere. This virus is still out here contaminating people. Praise God. And I didn't think for a moment that it would get back as bad as it is. Somebody say amen. You know, we can try to ignore it as much as we want to, but it's real. And it's out here and it's taking lives and it's, it's dividing families and tearing down structures. And I was here this week in rehearsal and our own Minister Ares has two brothers that have contracted the virus. And one of them tested negative after he had the virus for a season, but he still can't breathe. And the doctor was informing him that he would be on oxygen for the next three months. Somebody ought to say amen. You don't know the celerity of this virus, how your body is going to respond to it until you get it. And I am so sick and tired of people telling me after they got it that it's real. Somebody ought to help me in here. Can we get a notice out that it's real even before you get it? Now, one thing I don't do because I don't pressure people because every man's got to be persuaded by his own mind. But we should love other people around us enough to make sure that everyone is safe. And for those of you people that refuse to mass up, that's a chance you're taking. But don't get mad at people when you see them with a mask on. Because it doesn't make sense. If I respect you not wearing a the mask, then respect me wanting to protect myself because I got too many ailments. And I can't afford to catch anything. Somebody said, well, where's your faith? Jesus didn't jump off the mountain when Satan took him up there, neither did he. Where was his faith? We identify faith the wrong way. Because faith does not give you the ability to test and try God in a negative way. Somebody ought to be a witness today. When we get into situations that we cannot get ourselves of, that's when faith comes into existence. And that's when God do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. It's like you having a headache and you asking God to bring you some aspirin. Touch your neighbor and say, go to the uh, uh, Walgreens and get some. Take an aspirin. Now faith comes in the port like this. Pray over it when you take it. That it'll work. That it'll do what it says. Somebody say, well, I don't know what's in the, in, in the vaccine, Pastor Long. You don't know what's in nothing they're giving you. When was the last time you scientifically checked the medication out before you took it? Praise God. Let me give you a perfect example. I'm, I'm asthmatic, and I went to my, my pulmonary doctor, and they gave me this new uh, uh, steroid inhaler. And I went home, and I took that steroid inhaler, and, and my pharmacist called me about three days later. And he said, how you doing, Pastor? I said, I'm doing pretty good. He said, I said, why are you calling me, uh, Mohammed? He said, I'm just calling to check on you. He said, you sure you all right? I said, yeah, but... I said, since I've been on this new inhaler, my voice just been going away. I can't talk. And every, every day it seems like my voice is getting better and better. He said, that's why I'm calling you. He said, the medication they gave you, it's, it takes your voice away. I said, okay, I, I can deal with that. I said, how long is it going to take it away from? Before my voice start coming back. He said, no, that's the problem. He said, the longer you take it, the more it deteriorates your vocal ability. I immediately got off the phone, called my doctor, and said, you know I'm a pastor. And I said, you gonna put me on some medication that's gonna permanently take my voice? I took that medicine and I threw it up in the cabinet because I didn't know what was in it. I just wanna let that marinate for a minute. Praise God, everything we take 
okay, somebody ain't liking me right now. They come out. I don't want to hear all that. Everything we take has side effects. And sometimes you got to weigh out the side effects averse to you taking it because sometimes you are better off not taking it because to heal one thing is messing up so many other things. Am I talking to somebody? So everything we do, everything we have, we should be wise enough to pray over it and to trust God. Hallelujah. Because if it's God's will for you to contract something, all the medicine in the world ain't going to stop it. Ask the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible said she had went and spent all the money that she had. She went to every physician that was available. She wasn't a poor woman. She was rich till she spent all she had. And the Bible says she heard about a man named Jesus. And by faith, she said, if I could but only touch to him in his garment. Now watch this, beloved. She didn't make this decision until after she had tried everything else. Nothing else was available. Do that sound like us? Well, I made up my mind that I'm not going to wait to exhaust everything else. I'm going to trust God from the beginning. I need about three of y'all to clap on that. I'm going to trust God from the beginning. I need about three of y'all on Facebook to put it on your page. I'm going to trust God from the beginning. I'm not going to wait till I get in the mess to trust God. I'm going to trust God right now before the mess even comes. Hallelujah. And for that, we give God the glory. Somebody say, I'm so sick and tired of hearing about this coronavirus. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I'm sick of telling you about it. And the sooner we do what we're supposed to do, we can put this behind us. Because I want things to get back to somewhat normality. And we don't know. This might be the new normal. Wearing masks. I forgot what country that is, but I know the young ladies in one of our eastern countries have to wear masks, have to wear veils on their face all the time. Praise God. Amen. Y'all know I used to watch them old movies, girl, and she be looking good from the eyes. <laughs> Y'all come on up in here with me. And then she take off the veil. Y'all remember the movies, them comedies? And you asked her to put it back on? <laughs> Y'all be careful out there, be careful. <laughs> Amen. I just want you to smile a little bit. This is the season of Thanksgiving. And I want you to remember this as we move forward. The season that we are now in, this season of tithes and, 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 and cheerfulness and joy, does not find everyone happy. Because scientifically and from psychological studies, a lot of people find this the most depressing part of the year. Simply because they don't have what other folk have. They have lost loved ones throughout the year. And, and, and celebrating this holiday season, there's a void in their family. And you know how you feel when there's a void in your family for the first time? You don't feel all holiday-ish. You don't feel all jolly, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Sometimes you feel a little down and out. But even in that, I want you to remember that Christmas is simply about the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if nothing else gets you excited, that should get you excited because through Christ, whoever you lost, wherever the void is, if you trust in God and believe in him with all your heart and all your mind, he promised us that we can see our loved one again. Look at your neighbor and say, ho, ho, ho. That's enough to be happy about. That weeping may endure for a season. But joy coming in the morning. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap for that first sermon.
Hallelujah. Come on. Let's go to the word of God. I dare not to hold you long this morning. You have been so liberal and diligent with me the last few weeks uh, as we extended our time because God was working a work in this place. And I pray to God that believers will start coming back to the house of God. I was on the phone with some of our parishioners this week that I know that be all over town. And on Sunday morning, all of a sudden, they get a conscience and get scared. Praise God. And I simply invited them out to worship service because the safest place you can be is in the body of Christ. It's in the sanctuary. If, any, if anyone has the power to keep Satan off of you, is God. Somebody say amen. And I'm just trusting and believing that if you get here, God's going to take care of you. And then there's a blessing for you for your obedience. We thank God for all the miracles this week as well. God's been showing up and showing out in the life of our beloved members and friends. And we're just so thankful to God for that. I'm blessing God. For those of you that have been on vacation, that have returned uh, safely, you had a good time. I'm thanking God, Minister Ambrose. I talked to him this week. He went on a cruise, and he had been through a lot this year, and he was talking about not going. And I said, no, son, you need to go. You need to go just for the fact of all the pressure and tension you've been under. Sometimes a vacation is really what you need. Praise God. You can be safe on a vacation. Praise God. Y'all ain't learned how to dance yet with a mask on? <laughs> Let me make it live for y'all. Y'all ain't learned how to drink a margarita with a mask on yet? Now y'all gonna say amen. Praise God. Hurry up, take a sip, and then pull your mask back down. And if you feel yourself getting real high, go home. Because you're going to take your mask off. All right, pass along in our business. That's what good pastors do. They don't let you go out there and jump off the mountain. They instruct you before you jump off the mountain. And I'm guilty of that. I'm always in folk business. Because I'm that kind of pastor. Because when you get in trouble, I'm coming. You ain't got to talk to my secretary. You ain't got to talk to my lay men unless you want to. Because I'm a pastor that's there for the people of God. Praise God. So I'm going to try to protect you so you won't make me sick. Somebody say amen in this place. And for my Facebook friends, if you don't know I'm real, try me and see. I'm not a man that just talks. I walk by what I talk. I live by what I preach. And I trust God with all my heart. Praise God. And anybody know me know that. Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Dave, talking here. We got so much to be thankful for. Dave is talking to us again this morning. After he had been through so much and after he had sinned in his life, he found it befitting to Psalms and to pen this text about the goodness of God and the mercy of God. Because if truth be told, no matter who we are, what we've been through, God don't treat us like we deserve. There's a whole song we used to sing, he looked beyond my faults and saw my needs and that go for all of us and for that we are truly thankful I would like you to look at the entire verse but I'm, for the consummation of time I'm only going to read down to verse 12 but this whole chapter solidifies the blessings of God and what we should expect of God and believe of God and how we should celebrate our God as believers somebody say amen Praise God, because God is praiseworthy. Let me say that again. God is praiseworthy. Not because you want to, but because we owe him praise. He deserves praise. Amen? All right. 
you got it, if you don't mind, would you stand to your feet for the reading of God's word? Those of you that are following along with us at home, you stand to your feet right in your house too, because the blessing of God is there with you as well. Father God, we come now in the name of Jesus. We ask that you will bless and that you will sanction your word, and that you will use us as your vessel, and that you will speak to the heart of the people of God that are listening right now, that are expecting a word from you. Father, move self out of the way and allow us to be empowered by the precious Holy Ghost, that it might speak to our minds and our heart, and that we would truly become thankful for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we love you, we adore you, we thank God for you being the Lord over our life. And last but not least, Father, come into this place. Come into the lives of those that are listening wherever they are. Bless their homes, bless their cars, bless their families right now. Father, we ask you to bring some order in this place. Some order into our lives, some order into our country, some order into our sicknesses. For we call these things that be not so as though they are. And Satan, we serve you notice as you go to and fro trying to destroy the people of God. We simply plead the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus over each and every one that trust and believe in his name. This is your servant's prayer. And the body of Christ said it is so. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Psalms. 103, Psalms 103, beginning at the first verse, reads this way. Praise God. Y'all pray for me because my glasses is foggy and they clean. Psalms 103, beginning at verse 1. And the word of God says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your disease. All right, coronavirus is in that. Who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice to all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has dealt, he has not dealt with us according to our sins. Somebody ought to shout amen on that. Nor punish us according to our iniquity. That's another amen right there. For as far, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to fear him. And that fear is simply a reverence of his power and ability. Amen. Verse 12 says, and I'm going to stop right there, and you conclude it when you get home. Verse 12 says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions, our sins from us. Oh, somebody ought to be shouting already. I simply want to pen this text this morning and talk to you for a few moments on a subject that simply says, thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ought to be able to thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. You may be seated. Praise God. Our God is an awesome God. He is worthy, worthy of all the praise, glory, and the honor. As we look at this text this morning, and as we identify 
the grace and the mercy of God, I would like to start this uh, sermon off this morning with the simplest and most profound definition that I possibly can come up with of God's grace and his mercy. Grace is, my brothers and sisters, God giving us what we do not deserve. Let me say it again for you because I don't want you to miss it. Grace simply is God giving us what we do not deserve. And mercy is God not giving us what we do deserve. Y'all need to write that down. Let me say it one more time. Grace is God giving us what we do not deserve. And mercy is God giving us what, God not giving us, excuse me, what we do deserve. Amen? You see, let me put it this way. As sinners, uh, we didn't deserve God's gift of salvation. Do I have a witness? Nor did we deserve the blessings that come along with salvation. Because as sinners, according to the word of God, we deserve judgment and punishment. Do I have a witness? Just look back in the Old Testament whenever... Uh, the, 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 the Old Testament saints was disobedient to God, and they died. Somebody ought to say amen. They suffered the consequences right then. But nevertheless, when we look at where we are today, God in his great mercy chose to judge and punish, watch this, his only begotten son in our place. Christ, my brothers and sisters, gives himself as the propitiation for our sins. Do I have a witness? And he simply does this, Minister Mays, because he so loved us that he chose to die in our behalf. I ought to have a witness in here. And my brothers and sisters, that simply tells us that when we repent from our sins and put our trust and belief in God, our sins are forgiven. Somebody will be shouting right there. Thank God that I can believe in God. Thank God that I can put my trust in God. Thank God I can tell God I'm sorry and be forgiven of my sins. Oh, it ain't enough of y'all clapping. All the stuff you done done, All the stuff Satan tried to take you out with. And you know every time you try to do right, he's bringing it up. God deliver me from the people that's always bringing up the negative from my past. That's telling me what I used to be. Hell, I used to be a little bit of everything. But I don't thank God for what I used to be. I thank God for what I am now. I need about three of y'all to say amen. Christ gives us the opportunity, preach Pastor Long. He gives us the opportunity to repent our sins. And in repenting our sins, we are justified before the presence of God. God even says it this way in one of our scriptures that he said, I'll throw your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. Never to come up again. Oh, that, oh, oh, that messed me up. How God is not going to bring something up, he threw it in the sea of forgetfulness when every time I get around somebody that want to judge me for where I am now, the first thing they want to do is bring up something that I did 18, 19 years ago. Look at your neighbor and say, God already erased that. And I refuse, I feel like preaching this morning. I refuse to, 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 to let you bring up the negative of my past to tear me down. Tell them one more time, God erased that. And 
Somebody ought to give him a praise right there. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we look at this 100th division, 103rd division of Psalms, this Psalms, David here gives us, David expresses a deep awareness of God's grace and his mercy in his life. Because it was following the time that David had committed a terrible sin. Can I preach it? David, my brothers and sisters, had was sitting out on his balcony one day and he seen a beautiful woman by the name of Bathsheba taking a bath and he was up so high where he could see everything. And David liked what he seen and, and he let his eyes and the lust of his flush cause him to create an atmosphere of adultery and murder. He lusts for this woman. He sent for her. He had her. And in having her he realized that he had sinned before God. And he sent for a husband, and eventually he ends up killing Uriah. And this sin, David thought he had hid well. Look at your neighbor and say, sometimes we try to hide stuff. But when you got God on the inside, how many of you know your conscience won't let you get away with it? Am I talking to somebody in here? There's somebody on Facebook hearing me. You can do wrong and nobody see you, but you still can't sleep at night. Toss and turn all night because you know you have come short of the glory of God. And why for the life of me are we always getting ourselves into something that we cannot get ourselves out of? Oh, y'all ain't saying amen. I must be preaching to me this morning. Eyes is too big. You see too much. We think everything that looked good, God gave us. We want to signify everything as a gift from God. Look at your neighbor tell you, everything that looked good ain't good. You do know everything that looked like go ain't go. There's some good counterfeits in the world today. Do I have a witness? I refuse to buy some stuff because the counterfeits are too good. I don't know if I'm getting an original or a counterfeit. I was on Facebook the other day and they selling Rolexes left and right. Last time I checked, you couldn't get a wholesale Rolex. Louis Vuitton going crazy on Facebook. Last time I checked, you couldn't get a wholesale Louis Vuitton. Now you got everybody on Facebook, and I ain't hating on nobody. Everybody giving you a deal now. Louis, Prada, Fendi. Y'all might as well come up and up in here. Praise God. And we can get away with it because ain't nothing but a fool going to let somebody look in the inside of their bag. See mine, see mine real. Look at the tag. Everybody, come on. Look at everybody say, you got to watch out what you're buying now. Oh, y'all going to get quiet on me. Y'all going to get sanctimonious. All right, I seen you in the gas station. You were right there next to me in the same gas station. Louis ain't selling out the trunk. Come on, come on, somebody be real for a minute. David had committed this awesome, awful sin, and he was grieving in his heart. He was grieving in his spirit. This, the consequences of his sin caused a devastating consequence in his life. And that's what sin does, Joyce. It leaves us. For bearing, it leaves us feeling bad day after day, feeling guilty day after day. But how many know God is a forgiving God? And the thing I love about God, he ain't like us. He won't forgive you one or two times. There's no limitation to the amount of times God will forgive you. Let me give you the key, though. The key to being forgiven is being sincerely sorry. You know, because some people say they're sorry and then turn around, tire and do the same thing. 
when you truly sorry, you, doesn't, you do not continue to do the same thing. That's why I'm using David as an example. Because when David repented to God, David didn't do that same sin again. He did something else. But he didn't do the same thing he did before. Come on, touch your neighbor for me and say, that's a good lesson for you. Stop lying to God and tell him you're sorry if you know you're going to do the same thing tomorrow. Oh, it got real quiet. It, it got real quiet. Don't repent of you being a cheater until you're really ready to stop cheating. Preach, Pastor Long. Don't repent of being a crook until you're really ready to be delivered from being a crook. Somebody say amen in here. Come on, I'm in your house. I simply told you that grace is what? Let's go back to the beginning. Grace is God giving us what we do not deserve. So if God actually gave you what you deserve, you'd be in a world of trouble. But because of his mercy, his mercy not giving us what we deserve, we got a chance to raise our hand and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his mercy. I ain't going to be up here long. I told you I was going to be short. So David, my brothers and sisters, he, he talks about the inescapable guilt that was gripping his soul because his despicable sin. And I've been there like David, Minister Gerald. I have sinned in my life where I couldn't sleep at night. Tossed and turned, I sinned where it caused me to cry all night long. Because I know I let God down. Is there anybody in here like me that ever felt like you let God down? I need some real people this morning. Try to wish I could take it back, but it was already done. But I stopped by to tell somebody on my way to heaven, you ain't got to take it back if you're really sorry. All you got to do is tell God, Father, forgive me. Give me another chance. I'm going to pause right there for a minute to allow you the time to say, Father, forgive me. Grant me another chance. There's somebody else. You better speak it out. Father, forgive me. Give me another chance. This might be your last time to repent of that sin. We don't know when and we don't know where. So David, my brothers and sisters, he, he pins an earlier psalm. Praise God. Psalm 51, he said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. David had messed up. Nathan had came to him. I wish I had some Bible readers in here and said, D uh, uh, David, you are the one. Father, forgive me for those times where I didn't feel like repenting until I, I got caught. Somebody missed that. Father, forgive me. He, 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 didn't, he didn't come to himself. He was brought to the reality that he came short. And sometimes God got to expose you for you to really be sorry. Oh, I need about three of y'all to just pray with me. I'm almost done. Sometimes God got to pull you out from under the cover for you to realize that it was grace and mercy that was keeping you all this time. But even in spite of him being pulled out from under the cover, David was now sorry for what he'd done. And I need about three of y'all that's, that's really have made up your mind. I ain't been doing God right, and I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. Not only am I sorry, I made up my mind that I'm going to do better in my relationship with God. I'm not going to do it because pastor asked me. I'm going to do it because God deserves it. Tell your neighbor God deserves my best. And I'm trying every day to peel off some of this flush. Trying every day to get out of these habits that I have adapted myself to. Praise God. It ain't the devil no more. Most of the time it's you. Praise God. You like getting high. You like getting a buzz. You like messing around. You like using God's money 
for what you want to use it for. You like not uh, giving God praise. You like not coming to church. You like not saying amen. You like church being an hour. You like partying all night long, pop locking and dropping. You like sleeping around with the enemy. Preach, Pastor Long. We like it until we get in too deep. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here this morning. Mariah, you got to help your granddaddy preach this way because ain't nobody going to say amen because some of us are in too deep. It's hard to say amen when you got all that weight on your shoulder. Look at your neighbor say, hell, you can release the weight. All you got to do is say, Father, forgive me. Father, Father, forgive me, David, 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 pins, maze. I feel like preaching now, but I ain't got a church to preach to. Don't nobody want to say amen. Uh, David says, uh, have mercy on me. Somebody ought to be like David today, right? Chapter uh, 51 down, have mercy on me, oh God. According to your loving kindness touch your neighbor say his his love he he his love he always gives us he's a kind god he looks beyond our faults and see our need david said according to your loving kindness according to the multitude of your tender mercy not only is he giving us mercy but he's giving us tender mercy it's tender. He, do, he doesn't whoop us in, the, in his shape. He, he treats us like babies. He pats us on the behind. Just give us a few love taps. I wish I had somebody in here this morning. You know how it is. When your baby does something wrong, you just tap them on the hand. You don't beat the hell out of them. Touch your neighbor and say his, his tender mercy. He gets us, Corey, but he, he, he gives us a little whooping. He never gives us. Oh, Lord Jesus. Somebody feel like preaching with me this morning. Oh, Lord Jesus. And you can sit there and act sanctimonious if you want to. Y'all, you can sit there and act like you got everything together, but I want somebody to know today I'm grateful to God that He ain't whooped the hell out of me when I deserved it. I'm grateful to God that He looked beyond all my faults and saw my. I'm grateful to God that the time He should have took me out, He gave me another chance. Come on, come on now in here. You acting all sanctimonious this morning, but you know yourself, if God had gave you what you deserve, you would have blew your own head off. But, but tell your neighbor, neighbor, thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Tell him one more time, neighbor, thank God for his goodness and his mercy. David here, look at this thing, we're crazy now. David here, come on, come on, come on, come on. David here, he, he gives God the great exhortation. In this 12th verse, David shows us the goodness, the unmeasurable, the unexhaustible love of God. In this 103rd division of Psalms, David shows us the goodness of God. And I like to go back to 51, it's then came back up. He says, and your tender mercy. Watch this. David says, blot out my transgressions. And the last time I checked, Mariah, I feel like preaching all to myself. The last time I went to Office Depot, I went to Office Max, G Money, and I got me some white out. Huh. Somebody ought to help me in this place. 
The reason why I use white out because sometimes when you use an eraser, it'll leave an indication of what you're trying to erase. Do I have a witness? But when you really want to, oh, y'all, when you really want to blot something out, you use uh, some white out. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Uh, and when you shake up uh, the white out uh, and you open up the jar, uh, take the little utensil uh, and smooth uh, it across the words. Uh, next thing you know uh, is the word uh, have disappeared. Uh, and I stopped by uh, to tell somebody uh, that his goodness uh, and his mercy uh, is just like white out. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, yes! Uh, won't he, won't he? Uh, won't he, won't he, won't he? Uh, white out your sins. Uh, thank God uh, for his grace. Uh, thank God. Uh, for his mercy. Is there anybody hearing me? Lift your hands. And David says in verse 12, he says, as far as the east is from the west, God will remove your transgressions. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, you have nothing uh, to worry about uh, because God uh, will forgive your sins. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, David said uh, he forgives uh, my iniquities. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, and not only uh, does he forgive uh, our iniquities, uh, but he blesses us. Uh, with some benefits. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Uh, look back at the text. Uh, the text tells us, uh, bless the Lord, uh, oh my soul, uh, and all uh, that is within me. Uh, in other words, uh, I gotta give God uh, all that I have. Uh, grab your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, said the Lord with everything you got do I have a witness and bless his holy name tell your neighbor he's a holy God he's El Shaddai he's Jehovah God he's Elohim he's God all by himself he don't need Nobody else. David says, Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Grab your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I got some benefits in serving the Lord. My mama used to say, Serving the Lord pays off after a while but tell your neighbor neighbor serving the Lord doesn't pay off after a while it pays off right now grab your neighbor and say when I think about where I could have been when I think about ow ow where I could have been God 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 ah. Woo! He's been good Is there anybody that know he's good Grab your neighbor Rock him and shake him, shake him and rock him. Say neighbor, neighbor. Oh. 
some benefits tell your neighbor I work for GM and GM gave me a benefit pack when I hired in but that benefit pack doesn't cover me I gotta pay a deductible but tell your neighbor the minute I got saved God gave me a benefit package and it don't cost me no deductible everything that I need is included in my package tell your neighbor David said he forgives all my sins a benefit package tell your neighbor he heals me of all my diseases cancer you can't hurt me asthma you can't hurt me coronavirus you can't kill me cancer you got to come out diabetes you can't hurt me the bible says god kills all my disease he says he redeems you from all destruction tell your neighbor bye bye last but not least he crowns my head with righteousness goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life good evening y'all ow ow I will dwell, I will dwell, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. And he all right, and he all right. Say yes, say yes, yes. mercy give somebody a high five and say thank God for his goodness and his mercy give somebody else a high five say thank God for his goodness and his mercy I got it now I got it now you can't get me with yesterday stuff thank God for his goodness and his mercy. I'm all right now because I made up my mind. I'm going to serve the Lord until I die. God bless you. God bless you. a feeling uh, Deacon Leron uh, that everything uh, gonna be alright uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I uh, got a feeling uh, 
everything. Somebody wave at me. Everything gonna be all right. Somebody said, how do you know? Jesus told me everything gonna be all right. I need a witness in here. Is there anybody else that heard Jesus say everything gonna be all right if you feel like I feel let's make some noise up in this place say yes say yes say yes say yes 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 God bless you. God bless you. Come on, give me my praise. Give me my praise. Give me my praise. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I got it. Tell your neighbor, I got it. It's in my walk. I got it. It's in my talk. I got it. It's all over me. I got it. I got the love of Jesus. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Storm may rise. Wind may blow. But the more it rise, the more I'm going to praise him. The more the enemy attack me, the more I'm going to glorify him. Because in the morning, uh, I got to leave y'all. Uh, in the morning, uh, when the saints go marching in, uh, I want to be uh, in that number. Uh, when he says, serving, uh, well done. Uh, you've been faithful uh, over a few things. Uh, come on up. Uh, come on up. Uh, come on up. God bless you. God bless you. All heads are bowed. All heads are bowed. Gracious and eternal God. Woo! Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, God, that in spite of what we have done, what we have been through, you are God that loves us in spite of our own. If we would simply repent our sins and give ourselves back to you, we can too be like David and say, I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, with all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Lord, we thank you right now for your delivering power. We ask to know, God, that if you find anything in us that is unpleasing to you, cast it out now. It is so. In Jesus' name. We pray, amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, give him a praise. It reminds me of a song that Brother Corey sang that says, through all I have gone through, Lord, it was you through all I have gone through Lord it was you it was you Lord it was you pulling me through can anybody be a witness today 
Can anybody be a witness today? You wouldn't be where you are today. Go ahead and play it for me, Curtis. You wouldn't be where you are today if it wasn't for the Lord. Do I have a witness? And for those of you that are still out there and have not made peace with God, this is your opportunity to give God your heart. Do I have a witness? Hey. Lord, it was you. Y'all know it. Come on, help me sing it for God. Through all I have gone through. Lord, it was you. Yes, it was. It was you. It was you. you Lord it was you pulling me through say it one time for me Corey I gotta go y'all oh, through all say it, say it. I have gone through Lord it was you say it God's got to pull you out of stuff you in. God's got to do it. It was you. Yes. Lord, it was you. Oh, yeah. Pulling me through. Say it one more time. Hey, Say it one yeah. more time. Listen to all. Through all I have gone through. I've been through a lot, Lord. Lord, it was you. Yeah. Sometimes hey. I feel like giving up through all. Through You. Nobody, nobody but you, God, It was you pulling me through. Now we got to go. I yeah. want you to tell them this part. When I stumble. When I stumble. When I cry. When I cry. When I feel like I wanted, I wanted to die. You were right there. You were friends turned. Yes. Walked and away. they walked away. You were right there. I can take it from there, Cole. Yeah. I take it from there. Listen. You never walk out on me. No. No, never. No, never. He'll never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. I'm a witness, I'm a witness that he'll never, that he'll never, no never, no never, no never, no no never. I'm a witness, I'm a witness that he'll never, that he'll never, no never, no never, no never, no never. It was you, it was you, it was you pulling. Come on, somebody say it. It was you. It was you. It was you. Pulling me through. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some glory. Give him some praise. Can y'all do me a favor? Can y'all do me a favor? We finna get out of here. But can we make the devil mad? Can we really piss the devil off? 
can we get up on our feet and give God the praise that he really deserves come on put your hands together just for one minute let's give God our best praise come on put those hands together make some noise in this place hallelujah God bless you as we come to the end of this worship experience if there's anyone that have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior I extend the invitation of you to come now while the blood is running warm in your vein even in your home if you would just lift your arms and say father I repent my sins I believe that Jesus is the son of the living God and that God has raised him from the dead I accept you Lord into my life as my Lord and Savior this is my prayer amen now if you prayed that prayer with me today salvation is already in your life you have already been forgiven of your sins you are actually now a child of God a son and a daughter of the king of kings now you have a responsibility listen listen bring it down Corey. you have a responsibility now to find a bible believing church a bible teaching church and then give the man of God your hand as he instructs you on the ways of Christianity and the way that we are to be Christ like and start your journey now this day toward the kingdom of heaven hallelujah because be like the rest of us we want to spend eternity with God if that's your prayer today follow up on what God is telling you to do may God bless you may God keep you we have enjoyed this hour and a half with you today God has truly blessed our lives and don't forget to remember to thank God for his goodness and his mercy I am a steward my life is a trust I must give an account to God for my stewardship and the people of God said it is so amen 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 God bless you